Good morning gamers, Obscure Edge here. Today we're going to be talking about Puppeteer. Basically I'm going to go into my loadout and what I think works best for me. Obviously personal opinion, you might think differently. I've tried two separate builds with Puppeteer. This is obviously with 2013 update. My first build was actually given to me by my cousin who really likes to get in depth about things. And he told me to do a light, uh, not a light build, an elite build. And it worked. It was working actually pretty good. Um, but as the desync kept happening, my lightning strikes were missing constantly. Since the 2013 update, they have hit, fixed a lot of the hit detection issues. And I haven't went back to the build since. So what I ended up doing was a possession build with a, um, a light build, essentially. So your light enemies instead of the elites. So I'm going to go into that build now. Obviously, you can see on the screen. I'll quickly scroll over uh, Puppeteer's main abilities you obviously unlock as you level him keep in mind obviously this is a max level build you could follow this up until max level though if you like all right so i don't switch anything out like i don't when i'm like level 20 i'm not i'm still building toward this build essentially you could still do that so shockwave and all i don't really do like i said i don't do elites anymore i go for all about possession fear and having lots and lots of infernal energy to take people over and my hope is, is by now that they fix things like you can't drop a weapon when you're getting possessed, it means that if you take over a hunter with a legendary gun, you're going to be able to inflict that pain onto them as much as they like inflicting it onto you. So this is all about literally possession and then overwhelming them with little lights. And the reason why I throw in a couple lights there, because they could do a lot of damage. They are really sporadic, their movement, they're quick, things like that. So you do a little bit of damage and then possess, uh, possess, <laughs> possess a survivor to then obviously inflict the real damage that you want to inflict. Elagos is one of my favorite bosses to play as, and he can be very, very strong. And the thing is, you could really rotate with him quite easily. So if you're losing a bit of health, you can pull back, use your ranged attack, kind of circle around the whole battle area, and then come in again, start swinging when they're overwhelmed by lights again. But mainly what I've done with this build is, is I put a lot of the damage into the basics, similar to my Henrietta, but I don't rely on the basement, uh, basements. Jeez, I'm thinking about Evil Dead while well, I'm playing Evil Dead. The basics, um, as much as I do the possession. My main thing is, is to possess survivors and then inflict that damage on them as quick as possible. There is a couple of things here like uh, melee and range attacks from possess um, inflict more damage. So that is one thing that you could go for. The reason why I didn't go for that is I went with this. This is the longer you spend possessing a unit and the, uh, the more damage you can inflict. The reason why I went this route is because... This didn't seem to proc when I was um, taking over a survivor. It says the longer you spend possessing a unit. Um, and I thought to myself, well, surely that would maybe work on survivor. But it didn't seem to have an impact. I might be incorrect. But when I was doing my test, this was post-2013 update, it didn't seem to be working. But when I ran it with the light enemies, it's you could definitely see the difference. So what I would do is I'd do swing, 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 run around a bit. Longer I'm staying in them, the more damage I'm able to inflict. So it worked pretty good like that. And then obviously having... Um, the health gain and everything else with the basics it worked really well but realistically it might be worth me even moving this and trying this again because obviously like i said taking over the survivors um is the main thing to the build but i removed this uh perk because it didn't seem to be that viable at the time because people were just dropping their weapons and stuff and you weren't able to use the weapons so that's why i went with the basics back to the basics but originally i had it into this right now this is w what is working with me i'm still possessing people still doing damage i mean but i lose that 10 percent increase that i could possibly get but keep in mind with this if this is now still if this actually did work with the survivors now you would still get maximum increase of 20 percent so viable that this would be actually better than this um, if this is actually now proccing with the survivors, which I'm not too sure if it does because it says unit, and I don't know if it would class the survivor as a unit when you take them over or not. So, but yeah, basically, basically the basics are the way to go for me. But there is um, a elite build that I did, and it does it did work post to 2013, but the hit detection was so bad I just got rid of it. Essentially, everything gets moved from down here to up here into your heavies, and obviously you'd put three into that because you want a bigger radius. And now that would be even more viable doing because since 2013 update, the your enemies on the screen should be doing more special attacks, which means they could be doing lightning bolts while you're swinging with lights. So. The elite build here, I think Elagos could go, uh, sorry, Puppeteer could go either way. I think you could play it. I wouldn't try to 
cross in half and do both, I would either go one or the other. But I believe if you were to go either way, I think you'd still have a lot of fun with it because he is quite versatile. Elgos does a lot of damage as well, and he has some decent skills to Obviously, he has his shock lightning to CC um, an area, which is always nice. He has the rock throw. Um, which is always good because you could hit multiple targets. Once again, hit detection was an issue with that, but they have improved on it since the 2013 update. But let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Is this similar to your build? Is my build completely crazy and you have something better? If you have it, let me know. Put it in the comments below. I'm always willing to learn and adapt and move things and change things. This is just my personal opinion of uh, what I like to do with Puppeteer, and it has been working with me um, currently at this moment in time. Since 2013 update as well, because the enemies are doing more on the screen for you, it's even more viable to kind of overwhelm them with enemies because whereas before we would overwhelm them and they would just stand around taunting but now they're more likely to attack and move toward the you know the enemy player which is um uh, well it was a much needed update let's just say that anyways guys thanks for uh watching the video hopefully you guys enjoyed it hopefully it kind of helped you out a little bit and yeah hopefully i could see you guys on the next one